In Troy, the empire of King Priam prospered. The king and his wife Hecuba were great lovers. Their love story brought joy to all the people of Troy, and together they accomplished great deeds to make the kingdom prosperous. For both of them, to have a successor to the throne was a longing that they asked the gods, and their love was so perfect that soon great news gladdened their great palace, and the birth of their firstborn Hector was announced. The birth of the Prince of Troy was celebrated throughout the kingdom, for he represented the royal offspring of Priam. Hector learned from the best teachers of Troy, proving to be a great student, of special character, because, unlike his father, Hector was a loving and noble man. In time, Hecuba was graced with a new son, but during pregnancy, the Trojan queen had terrible nightmares, and the most disturbing was the sinister dream she had the night before the birth of her second son. In the morning Hecuba told the horrendous nightmare to her beloved husband, saying, Beloved, a terrible dream has corrupted my rest. I have seen how all Troy was burning in flames, and nothing could be done. Priam, very worried, immediately decided to go to the oracle and ask for an explanation for such a sinister event. The oracle's answer was heartbreaking for the kings, for they were told that the child who was about to be born would be the one who would lead Troy to decadence and ruin, and that he would be the one to blame for the fall of Troy. For Priam, the message of the oracle was a giant blow, because being the king of Troy, he had to ensure the prosperity of all his people. That same afternoon the child was born whom Hecuba named Alexander. He was a beautiful and healthy boy. However, Priam meant a great threat to the kingdom, so he decided to snatch the newborn from Hecuba's arms and gave him to the shepherd Agileos. The king told the noble shepherd that he should take him to the thick forest and end the creature's life for the good of Troy. So Agileo walks with the child in his arms towards his end looking for the right place. However, the noble shepherd could not comply with the provision of the king, so he abandoned him in the forest and ran to his quarters. That night the guilt did not let Agileo sleep, because he remembered the bright face of the king's son, so he returned for him and fortunately found him alive, next to some bears. There he understood that it was the will of the gods that the creature kept his life. He took him home, cared for him, and raised him secretly as his son, naming him Paris. In time, the Trojan kings conceived many more children, including Helenus and Cassandra, who gradually made their way among the main characters of Troy, respected and loved by their people. Hector grew rapidly and over the years became a brave Trojan man and soldier, named the Prince of Troy, the heir to the prestigious throne. Hector was passionate about discipline and although his temperament was peaceful, his duties as a royal and future king were to learn the arts of war. In time, he positioned himself as the foremost soldier in charge of the Trojan army. It was said that Prince Hector possessed the greatest gifts of a true warrior, for he was an admirable fighter, respected, and very strong. His skills went beyond those of any soldier in the kingdom. As usual in the kingdom, every year on the date of Alexander's birth, a great celebration was held in his honor, because throughout Troy it was believed that the child had died. The celebration consisted of great banquets and traditional games that were enjoyed among all the people, and several soldiers of the kingdom each year went to the mountain Ida to get prizes for the winners of the various games and fights. While there, from afar they saw a large and beautiful bull, and immediately seized it in the name of King Priam. However, that bull was the property of the shepherd Paris who, seeing that his bull was taken, challenged the soldiers to recover it. Unfortunately, the soldiers shielded themselves with the word of the king and said that his will had to be done, so Paris decided to go after the recruits to the city. Behind him, a beautiful lady shouted his name saying that he should not leave because if he left home he would never return. That woman was Paris' lover, the beautiful unknown. She was the nymph with whom Paris lived and her love was so great that she did not want the young man to leave. Unfortunately, Paris ignored his wife and arrived at Troy. The celebration began in great festivities perplexed Paris, who had never seen a city like this before, saw his beloved bull on the side and decided to enroll in the games to get him back. Among the participants were several sons of King Priam, and thus began the contest. Whoever managed to defeat the other man in a fair fight, would be the new winner of the gigantic bull of Paris. 
After several encounters, the young shepherd Paris managed to defeat each of his opponents until he had to face the most respected of the soldiers, Prince Hector. The fight began, and Hector, confident of his great abilities, trampled for brief moments the body of Paris, who did not give up, and immediately stood up. The fight was very close and those who witnessed the fight could not believe how simple Shepard possessed so much strength and cunning, just like a warrior. Finally, Paris took so much strength and managed to knock Hector down with a single blow, thus achieving victory. Paris had defeated his brother Hector in combat and no one knew that he was the son of King Priam. So, by showing himself as a shepherd, he greatly offended the honor of the new heir to the throne. Seeing such humiliation, Diphobus, brother of Hector, hit a war cry, because he was furious about what happened and ordered to attack Paris. The young Paris, seeing the intentions of the soldiers, ran desperately, trying to escape from Troy. He reached the great temple of the god Zeus, and there he took refuge with his back turned to a woman with a beautiful figure, and when he turned around, his surprised face puzzled everyone. The woman was Cassandra, the sister of Hector, who obtained divinatory gifts, but who years before was discredited, for she was branded as mad after she rejected the love of the god Apollo. The soldiers came in search of Paris, and the young woman said, The ruin of Troy has come, hurry, and kill my brother Alexander. No one understood Cassandra's words. The soldiers took Paris as their prisoner until the kings arrived. Priam and Hecuba, before the deafening cries of Cassandra, ordered to release the young Paris. And quickly Hecuba approaches the shepherd, caresses him very gently, and saw in his eyes the son who many years ago was snatched from her arms. Hecuba and Priam sent for Agileos in search of an answer. And so the old shepherd confirmed what had previously been revealed, saying, King Priam, I beg your forgiveness. I could not kill your son, for I did not have the courage. But today he is a noble, healthy and strong man. Hector with his parents and other brothers welcomed Paris. His brother had risen, and they accepted him, and in tears, King Priam and his wife Hecuba welcomed him into their palace. Hector and Paris got to know each other, and Hector taught with great patience to his reborn brother Paris the duties of the kingdom and especially to defend himself on the battlefield. The years passed and the Prince of Troy, Hector, reached middle age and met a maiden who captivated him with her great beauty, with whom he fell deeply in love and soon married the beautiful Andromache, daughter of the king of Thebes, Aetian. One day, up to the Trojan coast, Greek troops arrived with King Menelaus, because he came to Troy in peace to respectfully ask his soldiers to collect the corpses of his men who had died in battle during a past confrontation, which had already diminished. Hector went in search of his father and told him that the Spartan king was in Trojan territory in search of his people. King Priam ordered to make way and offer him a stay for him and his people. Hector and Paris were in charge of welcoming the Greek retinue in the kingdom. The great hospitality that the Trojans showed to King Menelaus made him really grateful and invited them to know his kingdom offering them welcome and hospitality. Paris went with the news to his father Priam and he took the opportunity to recover his sister Aesian, who years before was kidnapped during the conflict starred by Hercules. So, Priam prepared a retinue of the best soldiers of Troy to send them to Salamis where his beloved sister was and tells Paris that he would be in charge. In Greece, King Menelaus treated them kindly and opened the gates of the kingdom showing his affection. As Paris entered, he was captivated by a beautiful woman whom Menelaus introduced as his wife. Despite this, Paris was unable to get the beautiful Hellene woman out of his mind, who was charmed by Eros, by orders of his mother Aphrodite. Both ended up deeply in love, and between glances and subtle compliments both secretly reciprocated the great love they felt, until one day, Menelaus left his palace because he had to attend the funeral of his grandfather, the king of Crete, leaving the Hellenic queen in charge in his absence. There, Paris and the queen of Sparta consummated their repressed passionate love, and Paris seized the opportunity and proposed to Helen to escape to Troy and enjoy his great love, thus fleeing from Sparta, plundering the entire city, and destroying everything in its path. They arrived at an island not far from Sparta, and there, Paris and Helen demonstrated their love to the four winds, promising each other eternal love, unleashing their passion as never seen before. 
Soon, however, news reached Crete that his beloved wife had been kidnapped by the treacherous Paris. Menelaus was filled with fury, a feeling of war, of revenge filled him. So, the Spartan king summoned Greek warriors to recover Helen at all costs. The Spartan king managed to gather thousands of soldiers, and before leaving Agamemnon ordered some heralds to go to Troy and warn King Priam. They arrived at Troy demanding an audience with the king. Priam agreed because he thought that the rescue of his sister Asian had caused dissatisfaction. In his palace, he received the retinue led by Polymedes, Odysseus, and Menelaus. Priam together with Hector heard about the terrible offense and the abduction of the Hellenic queen. Between shouts and demands, the Greeks demanded the return of the Spartan queen for peace, and if not, a fatal war would begin. Hector felt very offended by the threats of the Greeks, so he immediately drew his sword, demonstrating his bravery and above all his lack of fear of combat and the Greeks. Hector immediately called his brothers, who also arrived armed, before the Greek emissaries. Their father, the Trojan king, told Hector to put away his sword and ordered the matter to be settled by peace. Priam was surprised, because he did not know about the terrible behavior of his son Paris, and that for no reason should come to his palace with absurd demands because years ago his sister Asian was kidnapped by orders of Hercules. So, the king tells Polymedes that he will return Helen as long as they return his beloved sister Asian. To the surprise of the Trojans, Polymedes said, the designs and orders of the great King Agamemnon are not negotiable. Priam was offended and angrily shouted that they should withdraw from his kingdom and that if Helen did not want to return, she would find asylum in Troy, even if that meant the beginning of war. The peaceful retinue had failed, they returned to Sparta, gave the news, and prepared as they had never done before, to recover the beautiful Helen. Thus, they left with a large court of the best men of Greece, to Trojan shores, without thinking that it would be the beginning of a long and devastating war. On the other hand, after some months, Helen and Paris arrived in Troy smiling and showing their great unbridled love. The people understood that the presence of Helen possibly represented difficult times of war, so they looked with displeasure at the young and beautiful Spartan. Hector faced Paris, telling him that he should return to Helen, because he was not willing to fight for those causes despite having the great city walled by the gods themselves, for Prince Hector's war was not approved. Months passed, and even Trojan coasts were approaching the great Greek ships, so Hector, leader of the royal army, granted by his father, ordered all the soldiers to stay alert and in combat position because the inevitable war had begun. Hector was perplexed to see thousands of Greek soldiers arrive at the Trojan lands because his army at that time was not prepared to fight at such magnitude. However, the honor filled him with courage and ordered the fire on his brave soldiers, sending the message to nearby kingdoms to ask for reinforcements. Immediately the Trojans at the voice of Hector began to launch swift arrows toward the Greeks, which, for Odysseus, were simple weapons that he dodged easily. Odysseus was the one who encouraged his soldiers to take Troy. On the other hand, Protesilus, a Greek nobleman, was the first Greek to set foot on the coast at war, and full of anger he ran straight at his detractors, leaving behind him the army of men under his command. Protesilus shot down a few Trojans, making his way through them, until in front of him was the brand new prince of Troy, the leader of the royal army, Hector. Protosilo was confident in his abilities and like a good warrior he was ready for combat. Hector looked at him with fury and so began the battle between the two, they confronted each other arduously, and the fight was close. But Hector had more power and strength than Protosilo and from one moment to another Prince Hector ended the life of the Greek nobleman, thus fulfilling the prophecy. For it is said that before leaving Sparta, the oracle said that the first man to set foot in Troy would be the first to die. Hector continued fighting, making his way to defeating a few Greeks, however, soon realized that they were not enough to defeat the great Greek army. Achilles was wiping out whole bands of soldiers, so Hector, as leader of the Trojan troops, ordered his men to retreat and take refuge in the great wall that surrounded Troy. Thus, the Greeks looked upon this event as the long for victory, leading them to celebrate on the Trojan shores by setting up their militarized camps. Hector could not believe what his brother had caused, for his people were dying on the battlefield, so he had to urgently reinforce his troops to lead Troy to victory. 
Hector was not going to give up, so he organized all the men on top of the wall with the best armor, arrows, and swords, waiting for the attack of the Greeks. That night Agamemnon organized the attack and decided to continue the fight the next morning because he thought that with the victory they obtained on the coast, the battle would be extremely easy. At dawn, the Greek soldiers departed in the direction of the Trojan Gate. However, from the top of the Divine Wall, the Trojans were more than ready to defend their people. So Hector, royal commander, shouts fire in honor of Troy, and the attack begins. Long and sharp arrows rained unceasingly against the Greeks, and from the ground, a strong army defeated the first ranks of Greeks that approached the wall. Several men were instantly slain, and Agamemnon saw that the Trojans were protected by the wall and that at that moment an assault would be fatal and would mean defeat. So he ordered his men to withdraw and plan a successful strategy against the Trojans. Hector seeing the success of their military strategy celebrated loudly, shouted with his soldiers, and proved to be a good real commander, thus marking their first victory and demonstrating the great fight they would give for their people. Hector continued sending heralds to allied kingdoms to recruit more soldiers for the battle, and one day the famous hero Aeneas arrived, who was a demigod. Next to him the oracle said that if he fought in Troy, he would help Hector's army to win the war. Months passed, even years, and the Greeks sent small expeditions to allied cities to plunder, invade and get slaves, until they found the right strategy to defeat Hector. Constantly Hector arrived in Troy because his beloved Andromache was waiting for him anxiously. After all, their marriage was solid and despite the war, Hector longed to have a child with his beloved. Months passed, and the maiden Andromache gave great news to her beloved husband Hector. While he was at the gates of the wall that protected Troy, she sent for him. Hector immediately returned home in search of his beloved, and as soon as he arrived, he said, Andromache, my beloved, what is the reason for your urgent call? His wife, sitting on the edge of the bed, with tears in her eyes, and a great smile on her face said to him, Hector, your firstborn is on the way. Our love has been sealed with the conception of our coming son. A smile was marked on Hector's face, who shouted to the four winds the arrival of his firstborn, and with a great celebration, he announced the great news to all of Troy. Within months, the first son of the Prince of Troy was born, to whom Hector gave the great name of Scamander. However, in the town he was known as Astyanact, the ruler. On the other hand, in the Greek ranks a dispute between Achilles and Agamemnon caused the valiant hero Achilles to abandon the war with all his best warriors. The news reached the ears of Prince Hector, who immediately took the opportunity to attack the Greek invaders. Hector, very astute, knew that it was the right time to attack the soldiers commanded by Agamemnon because his army was weak. The commander prince ordered him to return to the battleground, but his brother Paris went ahead and being already in front of the Greeks, shouted, I challenge the best Greek warriors to a duel to the death against me. Many were those who wished to end the life of the young Paris because he had been the cause of the war. However, who would take the word of the son of Priam was King Menelaus, who with great anger told him that both would fight to the death and whoever wins the fight would be the one who would keep the beautiful Helen. Paris showed a face of astonishment, and shielded himself among the other soldiers, for Menelaus showed a certain superiority over Paris, which made Paris denote his cowardice. Hector, who had witnessed what had happened, shouted and insulted his brother, for Paris' cowardly act was unworthy, and made him reflect on such a dishonorable act. Paris, encouraged by his brother Hector, returned to the front of the troops and rectified his duel against Menelaus sealing a pact accepted by both Trojans and Greeks, and that agreement could be the end of the war, for whoever wins would be the beloved of Helen. From the top of the wall was watching King Priam, with Helen, Andromache, and Queen Hecuba. Down below, everything was ready for the cruel confrontation. Hector was backing his brother Paris from behind, who strongly threw himself into combat. The fight was too close, with fatigue Paris declined and the Trojan warrior was about to take his life to finally get the victory. On the ground Paris hailed the gods and saw his end very close. Menelaus approached to end his life, but a peculiar cloud of dust covered the body of Paris, who then disappeared along with that mist. The goddess Aphrodite would be the one who saved Paris from his death, 
which caused the war to drag on, even though they had already been fighting for nine years. Menelaus claimed Helen to the Trojans because when Paris disappeared, the Spartan king was proclaimed as the winner. However, the goddess Hera would not allow the escape of Paris, so Athena whispers in the ear of a noble Trojan soldier that if he defeats Menelaus the victory was in his hands. Thus, she launched a sharp arrow at the Spartan king, provoking the rest of the Greeks to go to war again. Hector continued to lose hundreds of soldiers on the battlefield, but never left the front of the army, unlike his brother, who was nowhere to be seen. Prince Hector decided to return to Troy in search of his brother Paris, and when he found him, he threw himself on him, telling him that he was a disgrace to Troy. He left the battlefield, while thousands of his countrymen were dying and fighting, he was hiding within the walls of Troy, being that the war was caused by him, and so he ordered him to put on his armor and return to combat. The Trojan commander took advantage of his stay in Troy and ran in search of his beloved wife Andromache, but on the way, he was detained by the other wives of the faithful Trojan soldiers. All were desperately asking for their husbands, in the hope that they were alive, but Hector told them to be in peace, and so he made his way to the palace. He called his wife, who was carrying his beloved son Astyanact in her arms. Andromache ran to embrace him and begged him not to return to the military front. She cried and hugged him insatiably, but Hector answered her saying, My beloved, what kind of a man would I be if I do not return to the front of my men? I cannot send my soldiers into danger without being at the front, because I am not a cowardly man. And more than that, my greatest fear is that the Greeks will invade Troy and take you as a slave because you are my wife. Andromache did not understand, for her beloved would soon return to war and most likely would not return. Hector asked to see his beloved son say goodbye to him, but the boy was afraid, for his father was in the great armor of war and with his huge shining helmet. Still, in tears, the spouses said goodbye swearing eternal love. Hector told Astyanact how much he loved him and that one day he would be king, feeling proud of him for being the hero of Troy. Hector returned to the front of the Trojan troops and shouted to the Greeks that he challenged the warriors to a duel to continue the great fight. But seeing the great Trojan soldier many desisted, refusing to be his adversary. However, an old Greek shouted, If I were not so old, I would finish you myself. These words made the other soldiers leave cowardice behind and jump into the battlefield. The hero Ajax was the winning fighter to face Hector, who immediately appeared in front of the Trojan commander. Ready for combat, they faced each other to death. Both were ranked as the best warriors of their cities, as no one compared to their strength and skills. The fight was even and both fought body to body until the sun went down. No one could proclaim a winner for both were such good fighters that they resisted surprisingly. So, at the end of the day, both decided to stop fighting and recognize each other as the great heroes they were, giving each other a big handshake, thus forming a friendship in consequence of the great admiration of each other for being great warriors. Thus, Prince Hector gives his mighty sword as a sign of friendship and respect to Ajax, who in return gives him his belt, putting a pause to the bloody war that had been going on until that moment. Both sides took that time to recover their fallen soldiers in battle and perform the funeral rites and honors. The days passed and the fighting continued. The looting was not long in coming and the deaths increased. And with Hector's great strategies, they managed to chase the Greeks to the gates of their improvised camps, threatening that they would be burned. That night Hector gave one of the most motivating speeches to his soldiers and assured them of victory by alluding that the gods were on their side. He said that, at dawn, they would attack with all their might. So, with Hector at the front, they rushed to the gates of the Greek camp to set fire to everything. On the other hand, at the great gates remained Agamemnon guarding the entrance, fighting with the Trojan soldiers, avoiding their entrance at all costs. Hector was ready to face Agamemnon, and while he made his way to him, a message from Zeus would reach his ears in the hands of the goddess Eris. The goddess told him that he should wait until Agamemnon was wounded to face him, and so he did, obeying the divine designs, until one of his men fired a powerful spear wounding the Greek warrior, who was immediately rescued by the other soldiers, while Hector shouted to his men to advance. Thus, Diomedes took command, ordering his soldiers not to desist. However, 
Above him was Paris with his powerful bow, and shot an arrow that pierced Diomedes' foot, making him also abandon the battle, leaving the warrior Odysseus in front. But it was not long before the Trojan soldiers wounded the hero king of Ithaca, who fled to take shelter immediately. The Trojans, shouted by Prince Hector, advanced and having defeated the great warriors of Greece, demolished the wooden fort that surrounded the barracks, thus outraging the Greek camp. They plundered, destroyed, and burned the ships, and taking control of the barracks, Paris and Aeneas were the ones who set fire to a great part of the Greek camp. The combat moved to the camp, and the Greeks had no hope, their only salvation was the mighty Achilles. However, the warrior was not willing to return, for he was greatly offended by Agamemnon. Hector, in the morning, remained at the front, at the foot of the battle, fighting with his mighty army, he sought control of the Greek ships, where the fight of the Hellenic soldiers continued to defend their ships. Ajax, on top of the ships, threw stones everywhere to withdraw the Trojans. Hector, to bring down the warrior Ajax, shoots his spear with great force, slightly wounding the Greek warrior, who in his defense responds by throwing a heavy rock, considerably wounding the Trojan commander's leg. Hector was seriously wounded, so they had to shelter him to be treated, with the loss of Hector, the Greeks even the battle. On Olympus, the war between the gods was similar to the battle on Earth, as the wife of Zeus hated the Trojans, and wanted above all Greece to be proclaimed the winner. Zeus, on the other hand, wanted the Trojans to win the battle, so both intervened in the war on several occasions, thus changing the course of victory many times. So, Apollo decided to help the Trojan hero heal his bloody wound, giving him back vigor and making him return to the warrior ranks with much more strength than before. Hector had been reborn. Patroclus decided to return to combat, and although his good friend Achilles did not want to return, Patroclus returned with strength, wearing the powerful armor of Achilles. Already in combat, unfortunately, the Greek hero was wounded by Euphorbus, and immediately Hector challenged him to the fight. But Patroclus unfortunately failed to defeat the Trojan, he died instantly after Prince Hector stabbed him with his powerful sword. Achilles' dear friend had died in battle at the hands of the Trojan Hector, so the Trojan commander took Achilles' armor and took it to Troy as a trophy and offering to the gods. Hector sang victory. During the night the Trojan leaders met, and in the middle of the meeting, Polydante, Hector's friend, advised him to return to Troy during the night because he had to protect himself from Achilles who was capable of returning to combat to avenge his great friend Patroclus, when he heard the news, and if he did not, his end would be marked. Hector did not heed the advice of his lieutenant, and continued in the camp, giving battle, leading the Trojan troops, and knocking down Greeks. As expected, the news of the death of Patroclus soon reached the brave Achilles, and without hesitation, the warrior went out in search of revenge against the one who ended the life of Patroclus, and thus returned to the war. The powerful warrior Achilles killed on all sides the Trojans in the front line, making his way to Hector and avenging the death of Patroclus. Hector for his part was already in front of the gates that protected Troy, protecting its entrance. Achilles made his way to the great Trojan wall after a long journey with many obstacles because he was determined to kill Hector. Even if he fled, he was willing to look for him as long as necessary as long as he could kill him with his own hands. He arrived and with a wild shout, announced the end of Hector, the so-called bravest of the warriors, who, seeing such a furious warrior, hid for a short time among the crowds of soldiers because fear corrupted him. But he recovered the courage that characterized him so much and with his head held high, he returned to face the Greek warrior, took his weapons and faced the great Achilles. Hector first told Achilles to reach an agreement, the prince said that the body of the defeated warrior should be honored, with the corresponding funeral rites, even if it was the same. However, Achilles was not willing to mediate or reconcile with any pact, because the only thing he wanted was revenge. Thus began the fight between the warriors. In front of the great gates of Troy, this terrible duel would mark the final course of the war. From the top of the wall the Trojan kings watched the fight, trembling, because if Hector fell in battle the end of Troy was definitive. Hector attacked Achilles without success, for Achilles easily dodged every move of Hector. 
The leader of the Trojans threw his powerful spear directly towards Achilles, and it collided with the armor of the demigod, as that armor had been given by his mother Thetis to protect him. Disenchanted, Hector foresaw his end, but he did not give up, so he unsheathed his sword, and in moments he threw himself toward Achilles trying to defeat him. However, Achilles studied Hector's movements and managed to stop the blows of the prince. A false move made Hector slip slightly, and while he tried to stand up, the powerful Achilles took advantage and pierced his spear in the only unprotected place of Hector's body. He pierced his spear through the neck of the royal commander, giving victory to the Greeks. With the last breath of Hector, cursed Achilles, and swore that Apollo would avenge his death, so died the bravest of the Trojans. Hector's motionless body fell to the ground, and from above, his father Priam, his mother Hecuba, and his brothers cried out in pain at the death of their beloved prince. Andromache, seeing that her beloved was killed by Achilles, fainted instantly. Now her son Astyanact would have lost his beloved father in the war. Priam cried out to Achilles to leave the body of his son to be honored. However, the latter with fury answered him by saying that the body of Hector was destined to be eaten by vultures and dogs and that he would never return the corpse. So, Achilles tied Hector's feet with a long rope which he tied to his chariot, dragging him all around the Trojan periphery, to the Greek camp. After twelve days of being dragged to the body of the Prince of Troy, exposed to the sun and other animals, Priam decided to venture to the Greek camp and beg Achilles to give him the body of his son for his funeral tribute. The Greek warrior, seeing the despair and pain of Priam, decides to give it to him in exchange for a juicy ransom. Thus, the king of Troy recovered the body of his beloved son, and to his surprise, the body of the Trojan warrior was clean because at all times the god Apollo had been protecting him. Back in Troy, the body of the valiant prince was honored with the best funeral rites, leaving his name high as a warrior who never abandoned his people.